Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you for joining us. I want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. And if you are like me and your father is no longer with you, we have our Heavenly Father who is there for us, who fills, who fills the Father's spaces in our lives. Our Heavenly Father is the Father of all who will call on His holy and righteous name. Our scripture for today is Psalm 32, 7 through 8. If you, for you are my hiding place, you protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. So we want to praise and praise and thank God for his guidance. We want to praise and thank him for watching over us as we go through life and through everything that's going on in our lives. Our song for today is How Great Is Our God, The Splendor of a King, Clothed in Majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. How great is our God. <clears throat> the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we see how great, how great. To age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three and one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great!
Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor to come before you. Lord, we thank you for keeping us all night and waking us this morning. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of church. We thank you, Father God, for the privilege of coming before you and hearing from you through your word. We ask you to bless us now, keep us now. Bless us, Father God, that we will be about your business and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we ask you to speak to us through this service. And bless us, Father God, that this service, Father God, will be what you would have it to be. We pray that you keep us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. How great is our God. Amen. He is the great. He is the great God. He is the only true and the only living God. We thank God for this privilege once again to come before him. Our scripture for today will be in Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 2, verses number 10 and 11. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs, the chapters 2, and the verses are 10 and 11. <clears throat> in the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs. The wise writer of Proverbs wants to speak to us today. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Let me just say happy Father's Day to every father, everybody who has played the role or acted out the position of a father. Thank you this morning. Thank you for blessing children all over this world. Uh, that's to grandfathers. That's to dads. That's to stepdads. That's, that's to those who who have become adoptive dads, dads-in-laws, those who have uh, adopted children along the way, godfathers, new dads, dads in heaven. We, we thank God for those who are expecting dads and honorary dads. Thank you so much for what you do and what you have done. We're so glad that you have been a blessing to young people all over this world. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 2 Verses 10 and 11 is where we are today. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. When you found it, you will discover these words. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The New King James Version reads like this. With wisdom enters your heart, and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. I want to talk about the Father's wisdom. The Father's wisdom, the Father's wisdom. I am thankful to God that I had my dad in the house. I'm glad that he was there to, to make a difference in my life. And I believe that because of him, I turned out all right. Some of you may beg to differ on that, but I understand real well where dad was coming from when he was leading us and telling us and instructing us. And in our household, it was just a wise thing to do, and that is to obey what daddy had to say. <laughs> it was a wise thing to do. It was wisdom. Those of us who were in daddy's household, we understood that it was just wise for us to do what he says for us to do anytime he said to do it. And not only that, we had to get in a hurry to do it. <laughs> so I'm thankful to daddy on making a difference in my life and the lives of my brothers and my sisters. Thank God. For that man. Amen. Now there are some of you today who are saying that I have no reason to honor fathers today. Let me just put in your spirit and be a blessing to you that uh, God has blessed us and uh, he has tremendously blessed us with men in our lives who have either been fathers or who have taken on the responsibility of fathers. And so we thank those men here today, whether they're there, they're our biological fathers or whether they are people who adopted us along the way. So thank God for, for somebody. Somebody in, the, in my hearing right now need to thank God for whoever, whatever the man was who made a difference in their life, there was, should have been some man who, uh, who has made a difference. I always say to women that you can never be his daddy. You can be a good mother who does things that daddies ought to do, but you can never be a father because... It takes a man to teach a boy how to be a man, and it takes a man to teach a girl what they expect in another man. So we're glad for fathers making a difference and, 
And some of those fathers have come in the form of neighbors, friends. Some have come in the form of uncles, and then some have been grandfathers. And we want to thank them on today. When we look at the text, we're in, in Proverbs. The wise writer Solomon is writing this particular proverb. We're in chapter 2, verses number 10 and 11. <clears throat> but you do have to understand that there are some things in this pericope, some other verses, that led up to this saying that we find in verses 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11 says, when, when, a, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, disc discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Let me just say to you today, as we look at the things that are going on in our world today, we need somebody who will give us wise counsel. We need people to know, especially young people to know, that wisdom is that skill to handle your character in life. Wisdom is the skill to be able to know what to do when knowledge is with you. It's not enough to just have knowledge of a thing. It's not enough to just think of a thing. We need to understand very clearly that wisdom is how to handle in the skill by which we handle what we know. We see people all over the world who have degrees and they are educated fools. We see people all over the world who, who have knowledge, but they are, are not what they would need to be. We see people all over the world who find themselves in the middle of situations going on all around them and they don't know how to handle life circumstances. Mm -hmm. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of riots. We're in the midst of protest. Let me just say to you today, there's a way to handle all those things. Mm -hmm. And wisdom, the author declares that wisdom is crying in the street. Wisdom is calling us Wisdom is in the street hollowing and crying out our names. Wisdom is saying to us, come and be with me and I can show you how to live your life. Mm -hmm. It's a sad day when, when we have race riots that existed even 60 years ago. And they're still existing today. When we have lynching in the street. In the broad open daylight, when we're crying, I can't breathe. Let me just say to you young people today, I don't blame you. You have a right and we have rights to be, to be upset. We have rights to march. We have rights to make sure we protest. But wisdom says we must do it in a particular nonviolent way in a way that's not destructive, but is constructive. I understand, I understand that when you're not heard, you riot. I understand that when you're not heard, you, you make sure that things are taking place that where you can be heard. But every father who's a godly father should be passing out wisdom this morning. If daddy was here, I hope he would say the words of, of Proverbs 2 to me. And he said them to me <laughs> and no apparent reason before. He would say stuff like, it's better for him to say, there he goes splitting than there he lays. What he was saying to me is that it's better for you to walk away from a fight yes, than to find yourself dead in the midst of a fight. Wisdom tells us to be careful how we carry ourselves and how we do things. Amen. Let's look at verses 1 through 9 where it leads up to verse 10 and verse number 11. He says, my son, let me just say to you this morning, women, boys and girls, 
just because the author says, my son, he's not just talking to boys. Mm -hmm. He's just not talking to the male species. He's not just talking to men. He's not just talking to boys. He's talking to boys and girls. Mm -hmm. He says, my son, I want you to receive my words. I want you to take my words and I want you to digest my word. I want you to take my words and, and understand my word. He says, son, I want you to treasure my commands. Make these words that I give you and make these commands that I, I, I appoint to you and these commands that I say to you, make them treasures in your heart. He says, you got to treasure them. Whatever wisdom and whatever knowledge that we were given Prior to today, we ought to treasure it in our heart. We ought to treasure it in our heart. We have to treasure it in our heart. He says, receive my words, treasure my commands. And, and the first thing he gives instruction by saying, treasure my words. But in the next statement, he says to us that we need to, he, we need to not only receive his word, but treasure his commands. He said, when he gives you instructions, you need to receive it. And then he says, when I command you to do something, when I give you an imperative, you need to make sure that you treasure it when I command you to do something. He says, my son, in verse number two, he says, my son, incline your ears to wisdom. Don't be a fool. Don't act like a fool. Don't carry yourself like a fool. Don't be a know-it-all says, incline your ears to wisdom. Make, make sure somebody somewhere can tell you something. Make sure somebody can get your attention. Make sure that when people come in to your life, you can hear from a positive source. Yes. Let me just say to you today, don't ever put anybody on your construction crew that's a part of a demolition crew. Let me say that again. Don't, don't ever put anybody on your construction crew who's a part of the demolition crew because the demolition crew comes in to tear down and tear up. You need to have constructive criticism, not destructive criticism. Incline your ears to wisdom, he says. Incline your ears to wisdom. Apply your heart to understanding. Make sure you apply your heart to understanding. This word understanding means that even though you get instruction, make sure you're aware of what the instructions are really saying. My wife always doing puzzles around the house here lately. And many times she pick up the puddle, puzzle and she just gets started right away. But now she has a 3D puzzle. And this 3D puzzle is not laying out a flat puzzle like she's been doing. You see, the 3D puzzle comes with instruction. And in this instructions, you have to read it and understand it. Yeah. In this 3D puzzle, you can't just take the puzzle and, and slap the top on the building, slap the side on the building, and say, boom, I got it. In this 3D puzzle, you got to understand that the instructions must be read. The instructions must be received. The instruction must be adhered to because the instructions will get you the building that you're trying to build. It's not like taking a puzzle that we're used to now. One thing you got to understand about a 3D puzzle, it costs more money. It gives you better benefits. It looks better when you get through with it. In other words, God has given us life and he's given us wisdom. And as God gives us life and wisdom, we need to get an understanding of what God is really saying to us. Yes. This, word, this word understanding means your, your intellect, your intelligence. In all you're getting, get an understanding. 
He says, apply your heart to understanding. Apply your heart to making sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know what you're looking at. You see, some of us have gone to school and, and we really think we know. We haven't participated in that one hour on the job, but we know the job better than the boss does. I never will forget my first year at Mississippi Delta Junior College. I, I was there enrolled in electronics. And while I was enrolled in electronics, I had to take television and TV a transmission. And we got into the fact that the television is a convergent device and it has three different colors converging upon it in order to make it a color TV. And I went home and I sit in the floor and I had been told in class that a television set can hold its charge of thousands of volts for five to 10 years. The smaller the TV, the less time, three years it can hold its votes. A big TV can hold the voltage on it for five to 10 years. So I had a little small TV, 13 inch TV. I was sitting in the, in the floor and I was playing with it. I had been told, do not touch the cathode gray tube because that cathode gray tube has about 12,000 to 50,000 volts on it. Oh, I was sitting in the floor. I had just enough education, just a semester under my belt. I had just enough education to be dangerous. I was sitting in the floor and my cousin Rico was watching me sit there. He was just sitting there and, and I... I went and I opened the back of the TV and I saw the cathode gray tube and I got my screwdriver and I touched that cathode gray tube. And when I touched that cathode gray tube, 12,000 volts left that TV, went through my finger, down my arm and out through my elbow. Rico said to me, we'll bury you. <laughs> He said, you, we, we'll bury you. He could see the flames coming from the TV. He could see the flame coming out of my elbow. He said one thing to me, well, we'll bury you. <laughs> I had just enough information to be dangerous. And because I did not use wisdom, my arm ached for years and years. Even upon graduation, I was reminded by that ache of getting my screwdriver across that cathode gray tube. It's, it's, a, it's a sign that we need to make sure in all of our getting, we get understanding. When all of our getting, we get intelligence. In all of our getting, we need to make sure we know what we're dealing with. In verse number three, the author says, yes, you will cry out for discernment. You will cry out for discernment. You will, will cry out for, for wisdom to let you know what's the right thing and the wrong thing to do. Discernment means a plan. You need a plan. The problem with young people, daddies, is that we have not given up them a plan or they have not received our plan. God wants us to be fathers who will give boys and give girls a plan. Mm -hmm. And it also says to us, young girls, young boys, that we need to make sure that we adhere to the plan. Yes. If you're going to have wisdom, you're going to have to have discernment. Discernment is crying out, and we need to cry out for discernment. If we lack wisdom, we need to ask it of God. Discernment is to see things that normally wouldn't be seen. Discernment is the leadership that God gives us, so much so until we won't do foolish things. Yes. says, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, something will happen. What will happen? Verse 4 says, if you seek her as silver, and search for her as hidden treasure. What's going to happen, preacher? Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge in God. 
You see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. The problem today is we have people all over this world, old and young, who has no fear of the Lord. We have people, old and young, who do not have any respect for God. I remember riding down Highway 3, coming from Moorhead to Indianola, coming from Moorhead to Inverness, riding in my car, and I would be riding and hearing my music black, dark at night. I'd be listening to my music, and I would have the Manhattans on, the, uh, the, the OJs, or uh, uh, Tebow people, Brights, and I would have somebody, Teddy Pendergrass, but there's a little white church that used to sit on the side of Highway 3 called Markham Missionary Baptist Church. Every time I got near that church and I saw the light from that church, I got right there by Barrett, Mississippi. I turned my radio, my eight track completely off because I had a reverence. I had a respect for God. Not only did I have a respect for God, I had a, a respect for the house of the Lord. I knew no one was having church in the building, but I turned it all the way off. My eight track was turned off because I had respect for the almighty God. Then I would make that right and head on into Indianola, Mississippi. There's another church there, St. James Missionary Baptist Church. By then, I was listening to Teddy Pendergrass, and he was smooth, and Sade was doing her thing. But when I got to St. James Missionary Baptist Church, when I saw the light outside, I turned my radio completely off. Now we got youth and young people who will play it up in the church. Youth and young people who will do any and anything in the church. It's because we as dads have to teach them to have respect and reverence for God. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. You will have understanding of your respect for the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The reason why we're in our shape, the shape we're in now, because... Our leadership has no knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Our leadership really doesn't care for God. Mm -hmm. Our leadership will make a mockery of the Holy Bible and a mockery of the house of God. Our leadership will make a mockery of the house of God so much so until he would take a Bible, stand in front of the house of the Lord for no apparent reason for a photo op. No respect for the Lord. And on his way there, he will beat and ravish and, and beat up people in order for a Photoshop that may, photo op that may last five seconds. Right. Our world that we live in have gotten to a place where we have no respect for God. Mm -hmm. I want to say to you this morning, Daddy, it's our responsibility to teach young people, to teach grown people yes. to respect God. We have to teach them to respect God to the point where we go and look for wisdom. We ask God for wisdom. Wisdom is crying in the street. Wisdom is begging us. Wisdom is calling for us to come and take part in her. Yes. Verse number five says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Verse six says, for the Lord gives wisdom. Who gives wisdom? The Lord gives wisdom. Let me just say to you today, I discovered in my life there are three ways to have wisdom. You may have several others, but in my life, in my lifetime, I, I discovered that there are three ways to get wisdom. First of all, the text declares that wisdom comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if any man lacks wisdom, he needs to ask God for wisdom. Yeah. You need to ask the Lord, Lord, give me wisdom. Mm -hmm. Solomon, the author of the text, Solomon, uh, when he was asked by God, God, God asked Solomon, what can I do for you? What, what one thing do you want? Solomon declares, God, give me wisdom yes, of how to go in and out before your people. That's my prayer today. Lord, give me wisdom. How to go in and out before your people. Because when God gives you wisdom of how to go in and out before his people, he blesses you in the presence of your enemies. Because when you have wisdom, you know when to be quiet and when to speak up. You know when to act up and when not to act up. You, when you have wisdom, you will make sure that, that wisdom is a lifestyle for you. It says, 
for the Lord gives, verse number six, for the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Not only does the Lord give us wisdom, he, he gives us what we are to know. He, he gives us instruction. He, he gives us a discipline in our lives. He, he, he shows us how to apply our daily lives on a daily basis. He shows us how to have daily insight. You see, the insight we had last year is not good for this year. That's why we have to read God's word on a regular basis so, so God can speak to us on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Thank God for daddies, spirit-filled daddies. Thank God for men who have taken on the responsibilities that other men should have taken on to teach children how to operate in wisdom. We have to teach them how to operate in wisdom. We have to teach them knowledge and understanding. We have to teach them how to gain knowledge and understanding. Let me tell you, some things men just have to teach that women can't teach. Mm -hmm. I know this day is a day for all unsung heroes. <laughs> this day won't get, won't get people flying in from all different places. Whether the coronavirus is present or not, this day, Father's Day, will not get a get people just bombarding the house and, and cooking big dinners for the man of the house. Fathers are unsung heroes. Let me say to you today, brothers, keep doing what God has called you to do. Keep loving young people. Keep loving wives. Keep loving neighbors. Keep doing what God has called you to do, and God has able to bless you. Verse 7 says, he, who is he? The Lord. The Lord stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Mm -hmm. The Lord is storing up wisdom. The Lord is keeping wisdom. He has placed it. He stored it up for the upright. Let me just share with you that we can get some things from God that nobody else can. Those of us that walk uprightly before the Lord, the Bible says that God will not withhold anything good from those who walk uprightly before the Lord. God withhold wisdom. God stores up wisdom. God conceals wisdom. God hides out wisdom for those of us who walk uprightly. He stores it up. He stores it up. He keeps it in store for us. And God never runs out of wisdom. Because he's God. God never runs out of wisdom because he is, he is God. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. David was here, he would say today that he prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anointed my head to the door. Let me just share with you. God knows how to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you. Let me, let, me just, let me just park right here and let you know one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why that nothing is working for the, the GOP candidate right now is because he has not submitted to the knowledge of God. Oh, we're going to have great crowds. We're going to have, we have millions who've already signed up. It's going to be a great crowd. He has not submitted to the knowledge of God. He has not submitted to the wisdom of God. Oh, this, this pandemic is going to be over. It's going to be 15 people and then poof, in a miracle, it's going to be gone. God is showing that he is not God, but God is God. And God is not going to let anybody take his place of being God. I mean, the crowds were so sparing, you could throw a rock and you couldn't even hear the person in the room. It's only because, it's only, only because he has not submitted to the will of God. I thank God for those leaders, those men who have, and those, those fathers who have submitted to the will of God. And as you submit to the will of God, God has a way of blessing you for generations and generations and generations to come. What that says to us today is God is capable of not only blessing us in this day and time, but it will he will bless our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our children. He has a way of blessing us generations and generations to come because we walk uprightly before God. In verse number eight, he says, 
He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. God, God, God guards. He, he, he guards. He guards the, the path of justice. Yes, we are marching for justice. Yes, we are speaking up for justice. And let me just say here, now is the time to speak up for justice. Yes. Now is the time to, to make sure that we demand justice. The iron is hot now. Justice has come by again. Injustice has been here for 400 years or more. It's time for us to call for justice. God, 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 God covers. God, God guards the path of justice. As we call for justice, don't forget to take God with you. As we call for justice, don't forget to submit to the ways of God. As we call for justice, make sure we take our character that God has blessed us with, with us. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about the Father's witness, wisdom. The, the Father has wit, wisdom. Not only does the Father, the earthly Father has wisdom, God himself, our Heavenly Father, has wisdom. Yes. He will preserve the way of the saint. He will preserve the ways of the saint. Let me just share with you. Don't get all bent out of shape because your children is running the wrong way right now. God has a way of preserving your ways and putting those ways before you and before them. Let me tell you, many of us, and I'm, I'm included, we thought that our parents were just totally off their rockers. We thought that some of the things that our parents said to us was just unjust to us. We thought when the parents, our parents said that you're only my child and I'm only concerned about you as my child, we thought our parents were wrong. And we didn't realize it until we got our own children. And now that we're trying to teach our own children the same things that our parents taught us, now we understand they were right. We find ourselves doing the same things that our parents did. We find ourselves doing this, doing some of the same things and telling the, the children the same things that our parents told us. We can't, we cannot get too far from God. Yes. Where we forget that God keeps us and he preserves us and he preserved the ways of the saints. Not only does he preserve the things that we talk about, he also preserved the things that we worship. We have to be careful that we don't worship cars. We don't worship people. Yes. We have to be careful that we don't worship houses or lands. We have to be careful that we don't worship money and stuff and clothes. We have to be careful that we don't worship education. We have to be careful that we always worship God and God alone. Yes. We have to be careful that we don't worship things, people. Never put the creature before the creator. Verse number nine says, then you will understand righteousness and justice. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. He says, when you receive my words, when you treasure my commands, when you incline your ears to wisdom, when you apply your, your heart to understanding, when you cry for discernment, when you lift up your voices for understanding, when you seek wisdom as if it is silver, when you search for wisdom as a hidden treasure, then and only then will you have understanding and understand righteousness and justice. You know, we don't really know what justice is. Because if it had been for justice, if justice would have had his way, I wouldn't be here today. I don't deserve to be here. If justice would have had his way, I would not be here because I don't deserve justice. I do deserve justice, but mercy came running. Yeah, we ask for justice. We, we ask for justice, but what we understand is because God is who God is, 
He did not give us justice. He gave us mercy. I should have been dead and gone a long time ago, but God gave us mercy. Amen. We talk about equity. We want equity. We want equal rights. We want mm -hmm. equity, and we want equal rights plus some. Trust in the Lord. Yes, Trust the Lord for favor. And God knows how to give you money if you trust him for favor. God knows how to give you justice if you trust him for favor. Trust God for favor. He will give you equity, meaning you will be equal and have much more. God has a way of blessing us in our disciplines. God will give us the facts of life, and he will give us equity in every good path. The wise writer says here that God will set our path. Remember singing a song back home in the church. It says, order my steps mm -hmm. in your word, dear Lord. And then another song we sung is step by step. Step by step, we're walking up King's Highway. We need to understand that God has a way of ordering our steps. He has a way of guiding our every path. God has a way of blessing us. We have to depend on God. Amen. When wisdom, verse number nine, when it, wisdom enters your heart, <laughs> when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, just say to you, all these things that this psalmist, I mean, this, this wise writer has covered so far, all these things that he has covered, we need to understand when wisdom enters our hearts, when wisdom is not just something that is taught, wisdom is not just something that is learned, wisdom is also that which is interwoven into our hearts. We have to internalize wisdom. We have to think of wisdom. We have to pray for wisdom. We have to walk with character in wisdom. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it wise to do this? Some years ago, the, the question was, what would Jesus do? Well, everybody that asked that question knew what Jesus would do. The question became, what are you going to do? Right. When you have wisdom, when you have wisdom, it has to enter into your heart. And then knowledge Knowledge has to become a part of your soul. And it has to be pleasant to you. This word pleasant means it has to be pleasing. You have to rejoice over it. Whenever knowledge, when the Lord gives us knowledge, it needs to be pleasant to our soul. Our soul here means character. The word pleasant means to be sweet. So it has to be sweet to our character. In order for it to be sweet to our character, we have to be transformed by the Lord Jesus Christ. If it's going to be sweet, if it's going to mean anything to you, if it's going to be sweet to your character, then you have to internalize it, wisdom. You have to inter internalize wisdom. You have to realize that wisdom is a part of you. Wisdom has to become your character. You have to walk wisely. Know when to talk, when not to talk. Know, know when, when to scream, when not to scream. Know when to fight, when not to fight. Wisdom has to be a part of your character. Mm -hmm. You have to walk in wisdom. You have to walk with understanding. You have, you have to walk with the skills of knowing what to do with the knowledge you have. Yes. Walk in wisdom. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, something happens. Di discretion. Distre discretion. Discretion. Discretion will preserve you. It means your plan. Because when you have wisdom, you are wise enough to make a plan. Mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody this morning. And I was letting them know that you mean to make a plan. Some people don't want to make a plan because when they think they're making a plan, they think they're getting ready to die. But you need to make a plan because when you fail the plan, you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. You have to have a plan. Every man ought to have a plan for his children's lives. Yes. Every husband ought to have a plan for his household. 
Every pastor ought to have a plan for the church. We have to live by discretion and we have to live by a plan. And it may not always work out like you want it to work out. That's why you have wisdom enough to call on God. Yes. Discretion will preserve you. Your plan will preserve you. I'm realizing today all the things that I've done in the past life and ministry, I'm having to utilize those things today. Everything that God has prepared me through, everything that I've gone through, everything that God has taken me through, everything good and bad, now God has a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. Because he uses what I have already gone through, whether it's good or bad, in order to live with it right now. It has become a part of my life, and now because i got a plan, it's preserving me. It's telling me what not to do. It's telling me how to handle things. It's telling me when to get loud. It's telling me when to be calm. It's telling me when to, when to rage up. It's telling me when to lay down and when to rise up. God prepares us by way of his plan. Every person ought to have a plan. Every student ought to have a plan. You see, students all over the world did not know that school systems were going to be shut down. It warns us. It tells us. Students, don't wait to the end of the year to try to catch up. Mm -hmm. It tells us, students, go in and get all you can get, do all you can, while you can, every single day because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. It says to us, don't go in there just to get a B or a C and make it. It tells us when we go in there, look for A. Fight for A. Work for A. Oftentimes tell people, men, women, boys, girls, adults, and young, I oftentimes tell them we ought to pray like it all is dependent on God. But we ought to work like it's all dependent on us. Yes. People ask me, Pastor Davis, why? Why you keep working like you do? Because I don't have long now. <laughs> I, I would like to live a long life, but I just don't know when it's going to be short. Yes. And when my tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth, I want the Lord to be able to say, servant, well done. Yes. So if you got gifts, if you got talents, don't try to wait to see for the right time when things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. You need to stroke for the best. Yes. You need to reach for the top. You need to get it in order now. You're getting of age. You don't have time to wait to get your finances in order. You don't, if you're getting of age and you don't have time to, to let somebody else carry you along, you need to have a plan for yourself. Yes. Discretion, this plan, God has a plan. You ought to have a plan. Then he says in verse number 12, if you have a plan, understanding will keep you. And then he says in verse number 12, it will deliver you from the evil way. Mm -hmm. It will deliver you from the ways of the evil one. It will preserve things from you. It will preserve you in the midst of all that's going around. God has preserved us. Mm -hmm. In the midst of COVID-19, with numbers rising every single day, every single hour, let me tell you, God has preserved us. Yes. God has kept us. God keeps keeping us. He preserved, God preserves us. Verse 13, God preserves us from, leave, from those who have left the path of righteousness. God preserves us from the ways of darkness. God preserves us so much so, for we has, he has preserved us from those who rejoice in evil. Those who are killing men for no apparent reason, just for the color of their skin, they're rejoicing in that. They love that. They're bragging about it. You know, these things have just, just started. <laughs> it, it has been taking place a long time ago. It's just started being videoed. Mm -hmm. God will preserve us from the rejoicing of those who are doing evil and those who delight in perversiveness of the wicked. He will preserve us from the ways of the crooked. 
In other words, God is preserving us from hanging out with them. And God is preserving us from being caught up with their stuff. God is preserving us from the immoral woman, the devious ones who goes down devious paths. He preserved us from the immoral woman. And every young boy need to know that God is preserving you from the immoral woman who's a seductress who flattereth with her words. You know, it's one thing to tell a boy, oh man, you're so, you're so handsome. The devil has a way of, of tantalizing and playing with us, mm -hmm. but God is preserving us. It says in verse number 20, so you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the path of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted. Mm -hmm. Let me just say to you today, if you're a father, gather your children up. Teach them to be wise. Yes. Teach them to make wise decisions. Teach them that God gives us favor. Mm -hmm. And because God gives us favor, we need to make sure that we walk with God. Yes. Teach young people to walk in a righteous way. Don't teach them to walk in an unrighteous way. Mm -hmm. God has prepared a table before them. Young people have knowledge that we've never seen before. Young people have intelligence. Young people are smarter than we would ever imagine being. But we have to teach them how to use that knowledge well. Yes. Don't be an educated fool. Don't be somebody that will think of themselves more highly than they think of God. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we teach young people the biblical principles of the Bible. That when we are no longer around, they will walk in a godly way. Yes. And after we've done that, and after we've secured that, we can walk with rejoicing in our heart mm -hmm. because we've done our part. That's what Jesus did. Over 2,000 years ago, he died for us. Jesus of Christ. He paid the price for us that we could pay the price for others. We as fathers, we as men, must pay the price. Those who died for human rights, those who died for civil rights, they paid the price for us to vote. They paid the price for us to live in any neighborhood we can live in. But let me, let me tell you, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price. He paid the price so that we will have a right to the tree of life. Where there will be no more slavery, no more racism, on the other side. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are listening to me today, if you never trusted Jesus, you need to trust him today. For God is the ultimate God. He is God our Father. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get to Jesus is through his Son. Only way to get to God is through his Son, Jesus the Christ. The only way to get to Jesus is to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and he will introduce you to God. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Our Father God had the wisdom. Talk about the Father's wisdom. Our Father God had the wisdom. To know that man couldn't make it to heaven on his own. Yes. So he was wise enough to know. Because he is the all wise God. Our father God had the wisdom to know that Jesus would be able to set us free. Jesus died for us. On a skull hill called Calvary. They laid him in a barbed tomb. It was a barbed tomb. Early that third day, he got up with all power. 
in his hand. Because of Jesus, now we have the right to the tree of life. Because of Jesus, now we have the ability to make it to heaven. He paid the price for us. If you're listening to me today and you've never confessed Jesus as your Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can get to know him today. All you have to do is confess with your mouth that you believe the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day moment, he, morning, he rose from the dead. If you believe this story, he can be a part of your life and you can qualify for heaven. If you believe this story, just repeat after me. I'm going to bow my head. I want you to bow your head and repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus name. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer, believing the story that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried in a borrowed tomb, rose early that third day morning, we believe that you're born again. You're on your way to heaven. There may be some who are born again, those who are on their way to heaven, but for some reason or the other, you have not submitted to Jesus Christ. You have not submitted to his lordship. I say to you, get to know him today by submitting to him. I pray God's blessings upon you that you will submit to Jesus, that you will repent of your sins and watch the great things that God will do in your life. If you're listening to me and you don't have a church home, I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church where you can exercise your commitment to the Lord. The New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you've joined us today and you've received Christ in this broadcast, please inbox me and let me know that you received Christ Jesus as your Savior. If you're a part of this broadcast and, and you want to join the New Beginning Church, inbox and let me know that you want to be a part of the church and that you want this church to be part of your life. And we'll be glad to welcome you to the New Beginning Church. And we thank you for joining us. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ, to his church. It's time to give to the Lord. We thank God for this privilege, this opportunity of giving to the Lord. You can do so by two different ways. You can do so by joining us by way of our cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Soul, cash tag NBC Souls, NBC Souls. You can give by way of cash app. Or you can mail your gifts to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box, 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box, 503 Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you for joining us here today in our morning worship service. You can join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Every Sunday for our Bible, our Sunday school, rather, for our Sunday school. And you can join us Wednesday, every Wednesday night at 720 for our Bible study. Thank you again for joining us. Those of you who are visiting with us, thank you for visiting with us. We enjoyed having you. And we are so glad that you have come to be a part of our service. And we thank God for you. Please uh, join us again every Sunday at 9 a.m. And also at 1045 a.m for our worship service. God bless you. God keep you. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. 
Look forward to, to teaching on the book of Philippians on Wednesday night. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another chance of hearing your word. We pray that your word falls deep down in our hearts and our souls. And bless us, Father God, that we will be about your business and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. We speak wisdom to our young people. We pray that your, young, your people and your young people operate in wisdom, that they will have a spirit of discernment, that they will have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless us as we go, Lord. Keep us to be the church that is reaching souls for Jesus Christ. Keep us being the church that are bringing churches together. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. Thank you again for joining us. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Continue to, to join us here at the New Beginning Church at our regular scheduled time. Be blessed in the Lord.